Sketchwork TV. Hi guys, welcome to Sketchwork TV Channel 2. How did they do that? Well, and today what we're going to do, we're going to look at the episode The Break-In. And the effect we're going to be looking at is where uh, me and Dean get turned into a cardboard cutout and just fall over in a two-dimensional way. So this is the effect. We've got Dean, the, the brave man, running down the corridor after the robber. Here he goes. And zap, I turn into a two-dimensional cardboard cutout. Uh, let's look at that one more time. There we go. Dean, the hero of the piece, running down. And bam, I get zapped. Two-dimensional, fall down, and that's the end of me. Okay, we are now in the special secret laptop room. This is the special secret laptop which holds everything that we know, apparently. Um, on the wall behind me, you can see some tracking markers, which we are going to replace with some warning signs and stuff like that to make it look a little bit better than, than just a blank wall. This is the cardboard cutout, which is what's used for the effect when um, both me and Dean get zapped by the, by the robber, the guy that's going to come steal everything. Um, again, it's got tracking markers all over it because that's going to track the perspective warp of the thing as it falls down. Um, which is quite important. We'll use a planar tracker for that and uh, we'll show you exactly how that's done. But this is the what's going to be used for that effect. Just easy, dead cheap, just a bit of cardboard um, which you can use uh, to recreate this. Okay, how do we accomplish this? Well, it's made up of several layers. So if we look at the, the main layer, which consists of uh, just me, doing my great acting <laughs> and falling backwards and uh, and that's that. The second layer is just a clean plate on the right hand side of the frame so we get to the frame where I need to freeze and then I'm gone and then Dean runs down. There's a little bit of masking he's doing there which we'll do later and um, but the grade will help with that as well. And then the final layer is obviously the cardboard uh, so one two three bam and I'm down. So it goes out and you get and you get to the frame you want to hold and then boom, we can do that. Uh, the actual effect um, that's used to create that is uh, we use Mocha, Mocha for After Effects to track a piece of cardboard which we'll look at next. Okay, now we're over in Mocha for After Effects. Um, I've imported my clip, uh, which is this clip here. Okay, and what this is, it's a clip of this piece of cardboard that we've put a load of tracking markers on, fall into the floor just like that. Um, and what we've done, we've, uh, we've added a load of uh, these markers on the, on the card and it's just for track points um, for Mocha because Mocha's a, a planar tracker. It's, it's loads of places for it to grasp onto um, with high contrast with the black and the, the, the light brown. Um, there is a, a small mistake that we did do when we shot this is we didn't use a high enough shutter speed. So as you see, when it really goes down, we got a lot of motion blur there which does make tracking quite hard and you do need to do a little bit of manual tracking on that just to make the effect uh, uh, work with this footage. Um, so tip there, shoot, if you're doing this kind of thing, shoot with a high shutter speed because you're not going to use the actual footage anyway. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, if it's dark and gloomy or bright or whatever, um, it's only for tracking purposes only. So you're not actually going to use this footage at all. So get the best possible um, uh, shot of, you know, of, of whatever the object is you're, you're going to be tracking. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning there. In Mocha, there's two types of um, regions that you can use to track. Uh, the first is a Bezier um, curve tool, which is like the one in After Effects. So you can draw curves and uh, finish it up. And then you've got your handles here that controls uh, you know, the curves that you've got there. Um, I, however, prefer the other one um, in um, Mocha. So we're going to delete that and we're going to use the X-Blind tool. Okay, using this tool it's going to mark a few points. So we're going to do, uh, do one, one in the middle, one at the top. I'm going to do a few points down here. Uh, reason being it does bend as it falls. Um, so you want, you, we want to create the perspective of, of the, you know, the bends in there as well. Uh, it is a bit lower than the frame so we're going to go down a bit lower as well. Um, and then up the side there Few, few there, and there we go. And then right click to finish. Okay, so what we've got there, and you can use the Z key to zoom in, um, and you can you can adjust these as well. But I've just marked all the way around, um, just a very rough um, areas, um, you know, points for the, for us to 
create this this region that we're gonna we're gonna be tracking. And and with with the XBlind tool, you've got the instead of the two handles on a, a Bezier, on this one you've got just a one handle, and it just controls uh, the curve of of that point there. Now with Mocar, what it does, it does not track these points. It's going to be tracking um, the actual area within these points, which is great, which is perfect for what we want to do here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out again using the Z key, and uh, you can use the X key to to move around. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to track this forwards using the track forward button there. Okay, and we're done. So as we look through this footage, it's pretty good. It gets good. And then you know, about halfway through, we lose the bottom right hand corner. Uh, then it's then the left. And as the motion blur really kicks in, it starts, you know, losing the top. Uh, there's a few other places where we've lost it. And then when it settles, you can see it's... Uh, it's a bit off there. So we can put a few keyframes in for this. So if we just go to where it starts going off, so about, I don't know, about there, and just make a few manual adjustments there. So let's just move that one over. And uh, you can see at the top here, the very top left, and uh, you've got the previous keyframes. You can actually match it up quite well with what, you know, what you've got there. Yeah. Okay, so that should now work with the with that side of it. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, and then let's have a look a bit further on. Yeah, it's starting to lose it a bit more. So let's just add another uh, another manual keyframe in there. So let's move that one in. Move that one over. Okay, so let's just see how that's done. Just move it track backwards. Have a look backwards. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then as we go down to about there, we can make another just a. Uh, it's quite blurry now, which is uh, our fault, really. Okay, so that's good. Boom. Yeah. Um, there we go. Okay, so now if we look at that, that's a pretty good track. Um, and what we can do, we can uh, if we put a uh, turn the surface on here, and then move the surface to the corners of the actual piece of cardboard there and down to about feet level, which is where we want the bottom to be, which is where my, my feet would have been, if because they're out of frame slightly there. Um, and we look at that forwards. And we can put on a, a grid as well, so we can see how that's, how that's acting. The bottom does go a little bit out, but don't worry about that because that's out of frame anyway. Um, but that looks pretty. That looks pretty good. Yeah, quite pleased with that. Okay, now we've got all the tracked data in Mocha. We need to get that across to After Effects, um, and this is a really easy uh, step to do. Uh, just make sure you've got the Track tab selected here. Um, there is an Adjust Track option here, which you can use uh, to fine-tune your track. Um, this we will go into a lot more depth when we discuss the signs episode because um, we use that a lot in that with all the different road signs being changed and things. But for now, we're going to um, just do a straight export. So make sure the track tab is selected and go across and export tracking data. Uh, we want to use the uh, corner pin data because we're using CS3. If you're using CS4 of After Effects, use the one below, um, but we use the middle one here and uh, copy to clipboard. Now all of the data in, um, in Mocha is now, is now copied to the uh, computer's clipboard. Uh, we're now in After Effects. I've created a comp here, which is just going to have one freeze frame of a giant version of me. So it's, what it is, it's the last frame that you want frozen um, from the main comp and all I've done is uh, just copied that frame and froze and freeze framed it uh, into a brand new comp and made it maximized. Uh, the reason we maximize it is because that's the way Mocha likes to work because it's going to corner pin that and shrink it down to the right size of our Mocha surface. So we've got this one freeze frame here and uh, we're going we're gonna, to gonna pop that into the, uh, the main comp. So in the main comp, we've pasted our large version of us on a separate layer on the top there. Um, we've got first layer is me uh, being flown around. The second layer 
is a, a clean plate on the right hand side of the of the frame there so as soon as i am going to freeze it disappears and there we've got uh, a free a, a complete clean plate there and then the final one is the giant version of me which is going to uh, change to a bit of a cardboardy kind of color and what we do we've uh, we we've, we've got that frame now and we've done the export tracking data and we've chose the corner pins um, from Mocha. We've copied it to the clipboard. And what you do, you just select the, uh, the large version of me and you're going to simply paste uh, the Mocha data into that layer. So you're going to go edit, paste. And you see it snaps right down to the right size um, and, and that is it really. The surface canvas there is what it's used to shrink me down to. which is the right size. And you see the corners there, the, the corners of the corner pin is the corners of the surface in Mocha as well. So now if we, if we scrub through it, you see it gets to the right frame. I freeze and then it follows it down as per our track in Mocha. Dead simple. Now there is a little bit of discrepancy in sizing there. Um, which you can correct with, from within inside the uh, large comp of me, or um, you can do it in a pre-comp, but just make sure that when you're, when you're scaling, you don't scale anything um, within the, the pasted layer that you've, that you've got from Mocha, um, because they're all keyframed already. Uh, if you start playing around with the scale in there, it's just gonna make things a bit strange. So you don't wanna touch the corner pin, the position, the scale, or the rotation within that layer. But if you want to, you can go layer, pre-compose, uh, move all attributes and OK, and, and then go back. And now you'll be able to scale that to match your footage and uh, it, you can make it you know, a, a near perfect or even a perfect match there uh, if you've got a bit of time. And because you're not um, adjusting any of the Mocha tracked stuff because that's in the pre-comp, uh, this is you can do what you like with this and uh, make it completely match um, your wh whatever you want it to match. And you got Dean running along in the background. Yeah, go on, Dean. <laughs> so that's it, and you can make that match, and uh, it's all good. So anyway, that concludes today's um, episode. Um, if we have a quick last look at uh, the final, um, the final effect. So we've got Dean, the hero of the piece, running down the corridor. <laughs> and then Justin, the not-so-heroic character, running out the side and gets zapped. Bzz, gone. Now this is the same, uh, exactly the same uh, technique is used later on in the episode when Dean gets, uh, gets his zapped as well. Um, so Dean gets whacked here as well Zoom. there we go and that's exactly the same we use a piece of cardboard put it in position dropped it down and we've got the perfect match so anyway i hope that that makes sense and you've learned a lot from this episode we've got loads of stuff coming up please check out our forums uh, if you've got any questions about this episode as well please um, just post it in the forums and we'll try and answer as much as we can um, any suggestions and stuff too post it in the forums check out our facebook our twitter and um, our official website and forum and uh, anyway um, my name is Justin Heesman. You've been watching Sketchwork TV Channel 2. How did they do that? Thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.